Nobody ever puts them in there, but every one of those then becomes a potential fire risk. Yeah. Hello and welcome to another one of our Ask the Expert videos here at Boat How To. We're Nigel and Jan, and we're answering your questions about your boat electrical systems. All right, so let's look at today's question. If there are multiple solar panels with individual MPPT controllers, with the output of the MPPT controllers tied together at a bus bar that has a single larger conductor led back to the batteries, what overcurrent protection is needed and where should it be placed? Is there any scenario where protecting the solar panel side of the circuit would require a fuse? All right, so we do have a couple of these. They're connected to a bus bar and then there's a positive connector from the bus bar going, going to back the battery. to the batteries. So let's um, actually address the last part of the question first. Is there any scenario where protecting the solar panel side of the circuit would require a fuse? In other words, a fuse of the solar panel. Mm -hmm. uh, the answer is basically no. Um, if you size the conductors to keep the voltage drop down, uh, which is one of the things that are essential in a solar panel insulation, the ampacity of the conductor is going to be well above the maximum short circuit current from the yeah. solar panel. So the solar panel can never melt the conductor yeah. down. Uh, the battery, however, of course, can melt it down. So then we put the overcurrent protection at the other end of the circuit. So let's say we've got, uh, I mean, I've been on both with catamarans with 12 panels, mm -hmm. each one with its own MPP. Mm -hmm. T controller. Which is, by, by the way, a good thing if you yeah, want to. Yeah, I mean, we recommend it. that you put individual controllers on the panels instead of paralleling them up. Yeah. Uh, it makes the system more efficient. So uh, let's say, well, in this case, we got six. And we got six controllers coming down to this bus bar. Mm -hmm. So they're all wired in here. And then we've got a, obviously, we have to put a significantly larger conductor. Mm -hmm. from here back to the batteries, because now we're handling, uh, in theory, these are 10 amp controllers, we could have 60 amps. Yeah. So the individual conductors might be you know, 12 gauge. Uh, right here, we might have a, I don't know, six gauge. Mm -hmm. um, so then at the other end of this conductor, when we get to the battery, we've got a fuse. Yeah. So that fuse is protecting this conductor. Uh, but the amp rating on that fuse is gonna be well above the ampacity of these individual conductors from the controllers. No. So then we need another fuse at every single one of these no. conductors up to the controllers and we don't see them. No. Nobody ever puts them in there, but every one of those then becomes a potential fire risk. Yeah. Yeah. What you might also uh, use instead of just this bus bar are these like, in the, like fuse hole, um, basically fuse holders where these uh, automotive fuses fit mm -hmm. in. Yeah. And that's actually quite a yeah, fuse nice, block. exactly, yes. you just use yep. a fuse block and um, have your main conductor go there and then have each wire going to yes. each uh, controller being protected by, right. by one of those fuses. Yeah, that makes for a very uh, compact and elegant insulation. Yeah. Exactly. Otherwise, there would be an option to use inline fuses, uh, like also these. Um, yeah, but then you've got a whole bunch of extra connections. Exactly. So um, the easy way is actually to use one of those fuse holders. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, actually, if you want to learn more about solar installations, DC systems on boats, uh, check out our Boat Electrics 101 course at boathow2.com because there we talk about these kind of things in great detail. Until then, see you next time.